You're watching KCR Secret Sessions with our special guest, AJ Lerman. What's going on, KCR? I'm here right now in San Diego and I want to show you a little bit of my crib. So welcome, welcome to my crib. This is a TV, I've never watched anything on here, but it's a TV. There's some nice food. There's a nice, beautiful woman. She's my manager, her name's Kelly King. Say hi, Kelly King. Here's our beautiful shower. Nice and clean as, as always. I'm gonna open the fridge, but the fridge is the only thing that really smells, other than the bathroom. Wait, I don't even know how to. Fridge! Filled with lots of Chinese food and Japanese food and Thai food and everything that's Asian food because Asian food's the best in the world. This is my bed. I don't know why the thing is closed right now. Whoa, hey. There's a person in my bed! I'm just kidding. We hey. we planned that. This is my my radio promo rep. <laughs> she just hit her hey. head on that. <laughs> we planned this, I promise. This is Christina, my radio promo rep. My clone. Hey. This is the back, and this is where we leave you today. There's some nice, oh my god, are those Cheez-Its? And Oreos, why haven't I been back here? What? What's up everyone, this is KCR Secret Sessions, and I'm here with AJ. What's up? Who's opening for Pentatonix tonight at the Open Air Theater. So, tell me a little bit about your background and your musical background and like where you're from. Yeah. And your age. So, I'm 17, to start it off. I'm from New York City. I've been making music my whole life, but I'd say I've been like focusing hardcore on music for the past three or four years now. Um, I've, I play piano, I play guitar, I play some like violin, trumpet. No, I'm just kidding. Well, actually, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> but like, I play like a lot. I could play like a bunch of different. I could play drums. But like, I'm first and foremost, I'd say with all of this, I'm a songwriter. So I've been writing my whole life. Um, just trying to come up with my sound, something that, you know, say something in a way that's different, that the world hasn't heard it yet before. So you write all your own music. Yeah. Where do you get that inspiration from? So I'm weird in that I'll look at like a sign, like I'm looking, I don't know. Look, what, I don't see much inspiration around me here. <laughs> Emergency, for example. So I'll see a sign and I'll be like, hmm, that sounds like a song title. And I'm like, emergency. I'll write that down on my phone. I'm like, what can I write about emergency? It's this emergency. I don't. I can't think of anything <laughs> on the spot. But like, what can I write about that would be like a double meaning or something mm -hmm. that it's like, I'm gonna try to come up with something like emergency. Like you're my emergency. I know that's terrible. But like, <laughs> like for example, my song Tongue, my new mm -hmm. single. Um, so, I, it's like yes, it is a sexual song, and like you would think maybe it is like a relationship I've, I've had with this girl. But for me, I wrote it from the perspective of people saying that they're going to do things for me and you know never following through with their promises and me just internalizing and realizing that I can't focus on what other people are going to do for me and I can only really focus on what I can do for myself so for all of my songs I draw my inspiration from you know personal connections to things but around different words like emergency or like right. tongue something that just pop out of nowhere so you mess you mentioned your new single tongues yes. and you also have a you couple can show them the bus right there <laughs> <laughs> my face don't show them my face, though. That's you know what, how... That's what we keep pointing oh at. Oh my god, you know like, how... Tongue. That was the first time I've ever wanted someone to see that. Because you know how badly I was like, I don't want my face on the bus. Like, that's so weird. It's but my, a, it's a my whole team, tool, My whole team was... My marketing team was like, we need... It's perfect. People will like see your face more and they'll see tongue out now. I was like, okay. So growing up, what... Were, who are some of the artists that inspired you? Yeah, so I'm a huge, overall, all-time Stevie Wonder fan. Um, at the same time, Michael Jackson. But I have never met one person, like my age or, or any of our ages, that um, has not been influenced by Michael Jackson. So I don't say that often because I don't want to like, I don't want people to, like thinking I'm just common. I'm a huge like John Mayer fan, like Bruno Mars, real people that just feel their music and just emote that. Right. Energy. Did I say Ed Sheeran? I think I just you said didn't it. Say Adrian, but Gavin DeGraw. Um, yeah, those are my like really, really, real true awesome. songwriters. Where would you say um, your dream stage is in the future to perform? My dream stage, wherever you are out there, listener. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, where's my dream stage? 
Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. I'm from New York City, so I've always gone to concerts in New York and Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. I've always gone on stage there and thought, wow, this would be incredible to perform here. Actually, last year, I was in Nashville on a songwriting trip, and I went to see the Zac Brown Band at, um, at the Bridgestone Arena in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I looked out into the audience, and I was like, wow, one day I'll perform at this arena. That's and, awesome. And, or an arena this size. In the next night, I got a call saying, hey, can you fly to the UK and perform in front of an arena bigger yes. than that? I heard about that. Bigger. I was just about to mention that yes. because I was going to say, you're not like, you're familiar with playing in front of a crowd that uh, big. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about how that went down. Yeah, so that, as it's like, it was such an exp interesting experience, that experience. So I got the call when I was in Nashville to fly down to Birmingham. Fly, I thought fly down to Birmingham, Alabama and perform, you know, the next <laughs> night. But I was like, no, Birmingham, England. So. They said that, so I flew to England and within 10 hours putting the show together mm -hmm. and I was on stage in front of uh, 30,000 people that night. Wow. Within 10 hours. That's awesome. So that was an incredible experience and you know I toured in Europe for those for about a month then and now I'm coming back next week I'm performing at that same arena in Nashville. Wow that's so awesome. It's all full circle. So you're opening for Pentatonix yes. and um, how did you feel when you were asked to tour with them? So. When I was asked, I immediately freaked out because, not even joking, like the day before, I went online to buy tickets to the DC show because I live in New York and I was like, I, I'm such a huge fan of, pen, pen, I can't even speak right now, that's how like, cool this is. Say pentatonics, pen, pentatonics, 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 pentatonics. <laughs> that might have been four, but I think it was five. Um, I'm such a huge pentatonics fan, and, oh, five times because of Penta. Smart go. girl, smart. Um, I'm such a huge fan, and you know, when I got the call, I really, really, I was, first of all, I was like, free tickets to the whole show, I'm just kidding. But um, <laughs> I, I, it was, it really means a lot to me that they, they like my music enough to want me on their, on their tour. Awesome. Now, I'm a big believer in young success. Yeah. You know, like, we're close to the same age, yeah. but a lot of people try and correlate success with an age. Yeah. And do people ever try and do that to you? hundred percent. And I think ageism in general, especially in music, is such a, is such a big thing. And, you know, people treat you ser more seriously if you're older, not even more, you know, like experience, just older in general. And, and I think that's such a problem with our society and that it shouldn't matter how old you are. You should, it, you should be treated the same, you know, if you're older or, or younger, mm -hmm. but you should be treated differently based on experience and how much, you know, you put, how much hard work you put into exactly, something. Exactly, hard work. That's my opinion. So I have faced, you know, difficulties, especially on my European tour last year. The crowd was a little older and they didn't treat me as seriously. When I said I was 16 years old at the time, they like, they were like, you know, they were immediately turned off and they were like, oh, why should I watch the 16 year old kid? Mm -hmm. But then as soon as I got rid of the age factor, they were interested again. So that made me realize how important and how much of a role ageism plays. And, and you know, I, I should be able to say that I'm 17 years old now and have people not, you know, I think it is something that, I you know maybe it's not as important as sexism or racism or, you know, any of these things, but I still think it is important in our society. It's so, yeah, going into this at such a young age in this industry, what is the best advice you've received? The songwriter told me that you know, a couple of years ago, the songwriter told me that you could be the sweetest, most juiciest peach in the entire world, but there are still going to be there are going to be people that don't like peaches. Mm -hmm. So, you can try to please everyone, but if you don't stay true to yourself, there's you know you got to You got to be real with yourself, and there's still you're, they're, there are people that are born to hate you. They're, they're just not going to like you from who you are, and there's nothing you can do about that. Mm -hmm. and, all you can do is stay true to yourself and really love yourself is what I've learned. What would you give someone advice? Say I was, I'm like, I want to make it big in this industry. What would you tell me? So what I did, and I think it's ridiculous, but I'd say to do this to anyone because it worked for me at least, would be just to find any email of anyone in the music industry you can find online and just harass them, like not harass them, <laughs> harass them with emails. Just send them like a bunch, a bunch of emails. Find anyone's and just like, send them a mixtape, send them anything you have to send someone and just see what they say. You know, it never hurts to yeah. network and put your name out there. I'll remember that when I'm trying to make it big as a rapper. Yeah, uh, <laughs> come on, rap. Um, so we're gonna wrap this up because I know- Wrap that, this up, because you're a rapper. That's why you want to wrap this up. I know you have to get, you know, ready in the zone, but is there anything you want your fans to know that I haven't asked you or that okay. you just really want to tell them? Maybe just the fact that I'm, I'm doing music because 
I because I love it and it's just fun and you know it it, ha it gives me the ability to connect with people around the world on an emotional level and like nothing else can and I, would, I just want to do this forever it's the most most incredible experience ever awesome well thank you thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs>